Good evening, and welcome to our middle school band concert. Tonight, you'll witness all that we have learned in our first few months of band. This concert is different from our usual live concerts, and we are so excited to share all of our hard work with you in a creative way. We'll be featuring performances from the whole band, instrument sections, and spotlight soloists. You are about to hear the sixth grade band perform. Most of us started playing only a few months ago, so this is our very first concert. At the beginning of the year, we learned about different instrument families and the instruments that are available for us to play. Then we receive our instruments and started playing and reading music. If any of you forgot the beautiful sounds your child produced in those first few weeks, let's give you a little reminder. <laughs> Since then, we have learned to create a nice tone, read music, count rhythm, and perform as an ensemble. We have learned many new songs, and we are so excited to share them with you. Now, first, we will play Hot Crust Buns. <laughs> Kosuke and I play the clarinet. The clarinet uses the reed to create sound like a saxophone. Is that reed? Did you know that you can play the first five notes with only fingers on your left hand? Here's Alex playing a song to us to demonstrate our first five notes. <laughs> The clarinets will now play the Good King Welcome Sass for you. Enjoy! My name is Mina, and I am a member of the Low Brass family. Low Brass is made up of three instruments, the trombones, euphoniums, and the tuba. I play the euphonium. Most brass instruments only have three valves to help us produce different pitches. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jackson Rolls, and I'm a trombone player. A special feature of the trombone is the ability to play a glissando. This is a slide movement from the sixth position to the first position. The low brass will now perform Merrily We Roll Along, followed by a performance from the whole sixth grade band. the saxophone. Many people think that saxophone is a part of a brass family, but it is actually in a woodwind, a woodwind instrument. This is because 
it uses a reed just like the clarinet. I will now perform All I Want for Christmas is You. <laughs> The saxophone will now perform down by the station. Uh, we hope you like it. Colton, and I play percussion. Percussion is a special because it has many different instruments, and we will learn about how to play them all. For now, we have been focusing on the mallet instruments and the snare drum. Here's Eleanor playing the theme from Harry Potter on that mallet. And here's Kai playing an original arrangement called RPG. Now, here's the entire percussion section performing Au Claire de la Lune, followed by a performance from the whole band. the trumpet and the French horn, and I play the trumpet. And I play the horn. The French horn is the only instrument in the whole brass section that requires you to have the horn facing behind you, as demonstrated right now. It also requires you to have your hand cupped and put inside the bell so you can change the sound in many ways. I will demonstrate a sound by playing the letter F. 
The difference between high brass and low brass is that the mouthpieces and tubing are smaller, which creates a higher pitch than the low brass. Here's Astro performing the William Tell Overture. <laughs> Brass players are going to perform country walk for you. and I play the flute. Did you know the flute requires more air than any instrument in the band? Here is Ebony, Delilah, and Sayana, who will each share a short performance with you. I've been playing the same pitches in unison. This is called melody. Recently, I have learned how to play in harmony. Here is a lightly row played by the flutes. This is a duet, so it has two parts, and this is how harmony is created. We will then conclude our part of the concert with a performance of lightly row played by the entire band.
Max, please enjoy the seventh grade band. We now welcome the seventh grade band to our virtual stage. Seventh grade band is exciting because now we are playing full pieces of music with lots of different parts. As you heard from our sixth grade band, last year, most of what we played was in unison. This year, we have worked to become independent musicians who can maintain our own parts. In addition, we have learned how to balance all the different instrument parts in one big group. Tonight, we will be performing two selections for you. The first will be Marching Tune by Percy Granger, followed by The Tempest by Robert W. Smith. Born in 1882 near Melbourne, Australia, Percy Aldridge Granger moved to Frankfurt at the age of 13 and lived in London from 1901 to 1914, where he developed an interest in folk music. It was during this period that he wrote Marching Tune. Based on a Lincolnshire folk song, it was written in 1905 to 1906 and was originally scored for chorus and brass ensemble or piano. While this piece contains many different layers being played at the same time, it's important for us to know who has the main melody at all times so the accompaniment doesn't cover up the tune. To guide our listening throughout our performance, Marcus on the trumpet will highlight the melody in the first phrase of the tune, and Nina on the flute will highlight the melody in the second phrase of the tune. Riku and Rowan will now demonstrate what it looks like to practice the bass line that accompanies the melody. Please enjoy this full band performance of Marching Tune by Percy Aldridge Granger.
Our next selection is The Tempest by Robert Smith. This is an exciting and action-packed piece. It sounds like it could be a music for a dramatic story or movie. One amazing aspect of music is that you can choose to interpret music in any way you like. In class, we talked about what, what the story behind The Tempest might be, and then we each wrote our, our own short stories reflecting the music. Here are some of our favorites. Once upon a time, a girl and her grandfather were sailing on their ship when suddenly a storm came. The wind starts to whistle all around them, and now they can hear the sound of thunder growing louder and louder. Lightning crackles somewhere, and the waves get rougher by the second. All around the boat, the wind is blowing, rocking it, and the sound of the rain echoes in the girl's ears. Lightning crackles again, and now the waves have turned into monsters. They roar and crash, and the girl and her grandfather try to grab onto the boat for their lives, but their slippery hands cannot grasp the boat, and at last, the storm conquers them. A century ago, all living beings were reduced about 45% of their population, and of those 45%, only 10% were humans. No one knows exactly what happened, or why for that matter. I mean, no one is alive to tell it. Some say that monsters invaded the world and killed almost everybody and everything. But I don't believe that's the whole story. The question I ask myself every day is how did the monsters get there? Or more specifically, were there even monsters to begin with or were there just us? A kingdom of elves and fairies are preparing for a war against seafarers. The merchants and marauders approach the kingdom and declare war. Small hummingbirds flap their fragile wings, dodging powerful bullets from the opponents. Meanwhile, a nine-foot-tall ogre stomps massively, and a storm occurs throughout. The war spills on and off until the seafarers plead for mercy. The seafarers' boat starts to sink as the thunder crashes against the ship's structure. By the seconds, the ship sinks deeper and deeper until nobody is above water. The kingdom has conquered once more. She was here, in the woods, ready to attack us. With our backs against each other, we skimmed the area. We shared glances and ran. Right when we thought we were safe, she appeared, her long, dark robe and beady violet eyes staring back at us. We pulled out our swords. She pulled out hers. Robin sprinted for her neck. He missed and fell to the ground. She put her boot on his chest and held him there. I charged at her, sword in hand, ready to slice her, but she kicks me down. Her grip on Robin loosens and he punches her down. She falls to the ground and aims her finger to the sword that has fallen. The sword levitates, quickly starting to move towards her. She was worse than we anticipated. She wasn't a witch. She was a spirit. The ones that are usually mistaken for witches. Powerful and dangerous. Don't go near one, Father had said. Father had told me what their weakness was, but what was it? What was it? Think, Amora, think. Fire? Dirt? No. Water. A big lake of water was right below us. If we can just get her off the cliff. But how? The Tempest has many different melodies that each can introduce on their own, then at the climax of the piece that are all played at the same time. Before we start, we will play for you each melody. Try to keep them in mind for when they come back in the music. Here are Alex on clarinet, Sage on mallets, and Stella on the saxophone, demonstrating each of the three melodies. <laughs> As you listen, see if you can hear each melody come back. You can also try to make up your own story to go with the music. Thank you and enjoy the performance.
you for watching the seventh grade band. Please enjoy the eighth grade band's performance next. Welcome to the grade eight band concert. We will be performing two exciting selections for you. The first piece is called On the Carry Shore, a piece composed by Jack Wiles that elicits the sound of the Irish Sea. We'll conclude with Majestica, a triumphant and energetic fanfare composed by Brian Balmages. On the Carry Shore is a tribute to the beautiful harbor town of Dingle in Ireland. The piece begins with a steady percussion texture, representing placid seas as a cool morning breeze blows in. Small snippets of the melody depict the gentle rise and fall of the surf on the shore. A subtle combination of ocean drum and ship's bell complete this nautical scene. On the Carry Shore is made up of many moving parts. The primary theme of this piece is presented for the first time by the flutes at measure 16. This theme musically represents the sound of the sea and gives the impression of an Irish folk song. To guide your listening, Misa will highlight this beautiful theme on the flute. A brief B section portrays a feeling of exhilaration at the beauty of nature that leads into the final and most gratifying varied statement of the primary theme. Haruto will highlight this transition on the trumpet. The percussion instruments used in this piece are intended to represent more of the sound you might hear in this Irish harbour town. The timpani represents the rolling sounds of the ocean and the large bell represents the sound of a ship's bell. You will hear Jay and Michael creating these nautical sounds throughout our performance, but we thought it might be fun to first highlight some of these special features for you. Please enjoy our art performance of On the Carry Shore by Jack Wilds.
Majestica is a musical celebration that seeks to embody the very magic that is music, the ability to transcend all languages and communicate any emotion. Dramatic fanfares from the brass contrast with the lyrical woodwind passages and eventually combine as the piece moves towards a thrilling conclusion. Majestic means having an impressive amount of beauty within. To me, it means like graceful. Royal and regal. Magnificent. Proud. Really grand. Glorious. Triumphant. Kind of regal, but like not in an elegant way, like in a powerful, bold way. So, what does it mean to play majestically? Play loud and proud and grand. Play like elegantly, like beautifully. You have to like focus on accents and details. A very beautiful sound, have a really clean tone, and um, fast and focused air. I try to play as like nice as I can, and I try to make my notes like smooth, and I try to like make the tone of my notes good. I I play legato, very long notes. You hear some of the different groups and instruments playing different parts, but in the end, it all comes together to complement each other and make a really nice overall sound. And it wouldn't be the same without one group or this one instrument. So it all complements each other really nicely to make a majestic sound. This piece makes me feel really like happy and energetic because it's a lot of changes. It's just such a beautiful and pretty song and it's really fun to play. Very uplifting and energizing because the sound is just very positive so it kind of just lifts your spirits. So this piece makes me feel like a prince walking down the royal hall ready to get the crown for the next generation. Please enjoy our performance of Majestica by Brian Balmages. This year, our band rehearsals looked a little different from previous years. In order to keep everyone safe and healthy, we've been alternating between in-person and online classes. We'd like to share with you some thoughts on playing in a pandemic. An ensemble during a pandemic, it's 
it's a, it's a different experience, yes, but um, um, I'm really glad that we were able to come together as a band, and uh, despite the recent events, um, we have this opportunity to be able to practice, or rehearse with, not not just alone in front of a computer, just with each other, and uh, I'm really happy that we have this opportunity. So we're quite fortunate that we're able to play in school as a group. It's just so much better when you're playing as an ensemble together. The sound is so much better. When you're online, you're just not, it's not really a group thing and it's more just individual playing. But when you're in, in class, you get to really like build the music and that everyone is contributing to make the music sound good. And it's just, it's not the same when it's online. And it's great that we've had the opportunity to just play together in class. As a flute player, it's definitely been an adjustment because we have to have these plexiglass shields in front of us and then sometimes to the side. But I think it's an adjustment that, you know, is necessary. I'm really grateful and like thankful that we actually get to like go to school and have like band rehearsals because a lot of people around like Earth now can't actually even go to school and then like it's a lot better for us because we don't have to sit in front of our computers all day and we can actually like see each other and like practice together. I'm really grateful that at least a couple times a week, two to three times a week, we get to meet up and play band together. And at least I get to play band because if we weren't going to have school, we wouldn't be able to play together, meaning we couldn't have the, all the beautiful sounds coming together. I think it's amazing how we can actually um, still have like a band group during on-campus days. I definitely think our band is really lucky because we get to sometimes rehearse in person and obviously with a lot of other bands that's definitely not the case. Being able to have like band rehearsals during the global pandemic is like not only fun because you get to actually hear it in your ears rather than having like your headphones on and listening to the song being played and you singing along and playing along with it. Uh, like you can actually listen to it and like adjust your the volume that you play at. You can like uh, talk to your peers like you can ask what the fingerings are or what this note is or how we should play like this section. I'm super grateful that we got to actually go to school and play our instruments. I think that just uh, being able to have band in real life and having like practices with, their, with the ensemble is amazing because we get to hear the different instruments and we get to really like practice as a group. I feel super lucky that we can actually go to school and practice as a whole band because I know many people around the world can't do so. And I'm super glad that I can see people, um, classmates, and practice together with them. Well, I think we should feel really special, I think, because um, not a lot of people get to play um, like this with everyone there, like, you know, face to face. So I think it's really special. So I'm really happy. It's really important to be able to be a group and to hear each other because that's how you learn and you adjust to your group to make a really beautiful sound. And the music just sounds a lot more beautiful when you can hear it in person. I feel like it's so much better when we can all connect and we can all play all together instead of us playing individually at home, not being able to see anyone. So I think that's just a lot better. It feels like the only major thing that's changed is really just the shower caps and shields. And apart from that, it's still the, still the great band from the previous two years. It's been a blessing um, because it's so much easier to talk and learn when it's in person. Um, so yeah, I'm just thankful that we, we do get a chance to play with that. Thank you for watching the 8th grade band. Have a great evening and happy holidays!